Okay, so this is the colony we've been following all season, um, colony four. Last week we split it into two halves and we split it vertically using a snail grove board. This week I want to check it um, to see what's going on in both halves. Now the bottom half I'm hoping will be queen right, the top half will, should have queen cells in it and we probably need to thin the queen cells, that's the main job we're here to do. So I need to get down to the bottom box first and that's going to be a bit of a slog. It's the one disadvantage of doing this method that you do end up with a tower that takes quite a bit of dismantling and it takes a bit of work and these brew boxes when they're quite full can be quite heavy so it's not the easiest jobs and that's one of the drawbacks to this method so each of these boxes I'm just going to put a lid on and because that is kind of one hive now, hive four, and this is a separate hive, and I don't want the queen getting in from one to t'other. Queen excluder on there, so there's no chance of any queens sneaking into the wrong boxes. And this is why it's handy to have a bunch of extra crown boards around to do other jobs like that. Not going to really show you what's going on in this bottom box today because we should find the queen starting to lay on a couple of frames. There's not a huge amount of interest in here. The interest will be in the top boxes. Three frames in because there was no brood on those outer three frames. So I'm having a look here and I can see queen cells. Here, here, here and here. And I would probably be looking at finding, I don't know, there's five on this fray side and there's probably some more on the other side. You could be looking at finding 20, you could be looking at finding 30. At the moment, I'm going to go through this box and I'm going to look. These are emergency queen cells. They started off as a worker cell with an egg in it. And when the hive found itself queenless, they built them out and then dropped them vertically. They're not the perfect queen cells. The queens can be all right, but there's not as much chance. They may not have been as well fed in their first few days of life. And on this side again, so just on one frame, we've got about 10 plus queen cells. Those ones I'm probably not going to keep, but I want to assess what I've got before I work it out. So this is the frame that I think is pin marked with a queen cell in the corner. Now, it was always the sort of slight thing with leaving this one down in that corner was was there space for it? So they've been creative and they've kind of uh, put a little kink in the bottom to make it long enough <laughs> and so get it round the corner. That's still my favourite one to keep uh, because it's been there a week, it had a larvae in when I saw it. It's definitely a strong one. Uh, I think that's got the queen cells that they build themselves first are the ones that probably are the best nurtured. That's my preference at the moment. So I will go through this box quickly now and if I see anything that's less good than that, it'll get torn down few cups there but I'm really not bothered too much about that. There should be by this stage, we're back six days later, there shouldn't be any eggs. There might be some older larvae not quite sealed yet. So we've got a little bit of old larvae there not quite sealed but there shouldn't be eggs at this point because there hasn't been a queen in here for six days. We've got a little queen cell there. That one's coming out because it's quite runty. There's always a big debate about whether emergency queen cells are any good or not. The chances are that some of them will be okay. But the littler they are, the less chance they've got of being well-nurtured good queens. Another one there. The reason for thinning the queen cells down is if I don't, when all these queens hatch out, they may fight. They may damage each other, that some of them will undoubtedly not survive. But you can also get cast swarms. 
and with this many queen cells if you had 10 little calf swarms or more coming out of this hive this hive would be so badly depleted that its chances of building up to strength by the autumn would be much reduced um, and you might lose the whole colony. Why they do it? The queens will fight. The danger that if they if they all hatch out, the danger that you get is the queen that wins may end up injured or damaged. And if she ends up injured or damaged, she's not going to be what you want her to be. So having gone through this box, we've got the one queen cell on the pin mark frame that we like and is a high contender. I'm going to knock down the queen cells on the frame before that we saw. So sorry, but you are never going to learn to be a queen. And as soon as you kind of uncap them and pull them aside, they're never going to get recapped, they're never going to get rebuilt. You kind of uh, finish the process off there. And they'll basically, they'll still eat back the royal jelly and they'll cannibalise, you can see them getting straight in there and, cannibal, and sort of eating the royal jelly and they'll cannibalise the larvae. So we need to go through the, t the second brew box as well, but that's one box dealt with out of about 15 queen cells. We've reduced it down to the one original. Okay, so now we're going to go through the top box and we're doing exactly the same process again. There was eight frames of brood in each one of these boxes, so the brood so there could be queen cells on pretty much any frame. Unlikely to be on the outer frames. And this is just honey. But you need to go through every frame. Some people will argue leave two queen cells. The majority of people are going to tell you to just leave one. I have to say, I've gone with the majority now and I just need one. Should you be the person selecting the queen cell? Who knows? But if you leave, as I say, if you leave too many, you are just going to get potential cast swarms. They'll be annoying to pick up because they can be tiny, they can be literally a a swarm of bees about the size of your fist. They're virtually, you see all the queen cups, queen cells along this bottom edge here. They're all weak ones and you could mistake those to be honest if you weren't paying too much attention for drone cells. They're not massively different. We'll just, there's one there. We're just going to thin it down as much as we can. If you ever get confused and you really want to check a frame, if you shake a frame that way, you could shake a queen out of her royal jelly. So if you want to get the bees off a frame with queen cells on, shake it upside down. Then you'll only ever shake the queen back into the royal jelly. But there's no more on there. Again, they're small, they're runty. If I saw something absolutely brilliant up here, do you know what? I might change my mind and I wouldn't be bothered at all about going back through the lower box and destroying the cell I've left if I found something better. And you're looking for something that's ideally about the size of the bottom two knuckles of your little finger. Um, it looks, hopefully it looks nice and craggy, um, like a peanut shell, but the craggier they are, if you get ones that are too long, that look unnaturally long, they can be a problem now. I'm pretty sure that's just all drone along the bottom, but I'm just having a nice close look. Okay, there's a halfway decent one there. It's a bit on an angle. It's not perfect, but you know what? I might have left that if I hadn't seen the other one. When you see a queen cell, just look at what position it's in. How easy is that when you drop a frame in to get damaged again? Because if you just leave one, and then as you put the frame back in, you've, taken, you've managed to mash it up. You've not done yourself any favors.
just a frame of breed. And the queen cells, we may well be on, be on the queen cells now. So I've left one, that one already existed and was still open a week ago. So this queen is probably going to hatch out, I would say, within the next 72 hours. Um, and then that queen will take about five days to become mature and then she'll go out and mate and she should start laying within uh, the quickest she'll start laying is a week after she's got mated but it may be quite a bit longer than that so you get this really horrible waiting period where you have to find out whether the colony's going to come right now there's a quite halfway decent one in the corner there but again I think I've seen better So you can get a period of up to a month while your colony is essentially got no new brood in it. All the old brood will hatch out and then comes the waiting game. Ideally you leave your colony alone for two weeks and don't mess it around. I've got an open cell there. Now if I was leaving a cell today, I might well choose, I might well choose to leave an open cell. Open cells are better because you know there's a larvae in there. Leaving a queen, a sealed queen cell, it might have a larvae in it, but you're not 100% sure. Take that one out. But sooner or later, when you do this process, you've got to make a choice. Make sure you leave one. If you're leaving one, ideally have seen it open, like I did with the one I've left, albeit I saw it open a week ago. That's it. There's the colony is fine. I really don't want to mess with this colony again this week for, for two weeks now. I want that queen to hatch out, hopefully within the next three days. I want her to go out, hopefully by next weekend. Mate, come back, start laying. If I check it in about two weeks time, I might see eggs. If I didn't see eggs, I'd just put the lid on and I'd go back to it again probably not for another 10 days or something like that. I don't want to be messing with it when she's out on a mating flight. I don't want to be messing with it where I might disturb her and get, uh, new queens when they're virgins don't give off the same pheromones. They're not as accepted by the colony uh, for the first few days. I don't want to interrupt that process. I don't want to mess up what I'm trying to achieve which is to make this a new queen right colony. So I need to be a little cautious. Hopefully, we've done what it takes now. We'll find out in about three weeks' time. That's it.